further emphasizes on that point. So uh, let me take a step back here. <clears throat> so in marketing, there is this notion of this metaphorical funnel, okay, since <coughs> ages. Uh, so for those of you who have followed advertising and marketing as an industry for a long time would know this, there's this notion of this linear funnel. So the idea is that you start you know, with a broader number of opportunities or leads, and through the funnel, it kind of reduces, you eliminate you know, the peripheral um, you know, uh, ones there, and you, you're, you come up with the actual opportunities which are there. Great notion, by the way. But it's linear. You start at the top, demand, and you end up with the actual sale, right? Now, Forrester made this case, this was, I think, about three, four years ago, that this funnel is no more linear. This is a jagged funnel. <coughs> it actually looks like this. What does that mean? And it, it actually does. So what happens is that if you look at, I know this is not readable, but I'll, I'll just give you a sense. So if you look at these phases, there is awareness, there is consideration, there is preference, there is action, and then there is loyalty in terms of repeat business, if you think about that. Now, if I look at this, then with this structure, this new structure, I could go back and forth. So I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Acquia about a product, and I like the product. And I really prefer that, third stage in a linear funnel. But I got a call from Shashank, a good friend of mine, right? He said, you know what, I think you should consider X. And because I trust Shashank more than I trust Acquia, though I like them. I'm just saying, right? So uh, in that case, the chances are I'm again here, right? So that's how it works. And why is this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come on to that point a little bit later, but why is this important now? This is important because we have means to do this today, right? Much more effective means that we had like 10 years ago. Okay, so you get this idea of how it was yesterday, how, what it is changing to today and in the coming years. So this is a disruption that is caused by you, the consumers. And companies are really struggling, to be honest, in terms of figuring this beef. You know, how to wrap their arms around this. So think about these pictures. I, I won't spend a lot of time here, but uh, how you plan your trips, how you identify the right restaurants, how you do shopping, how you meet people, the decisions that you make about you know, buying something on just a, a chat message or something like that. Right? So this has kind of turn, turned to its head in terms of that push-based model of marketing and messaging, the command-driven marketing and messaging, if I may call it that. And the problem is the consumer is always connected. I mean, you would see people fiddling with their phones. Um, my friend right there at the back has some work to do. So I mean, pe people are always, always busy, even in the night. I, I check my emails, 2.30 in the night. <laughs> people do that, right? They're always connected. So, so here's what I'm saying, here's the net net of what I'm saying. I'm, the argument I'm proposing and the case I'm making is that this consumer is actually the open source consumer. And think about the values. So why am I saying that? I'm saying that this consumer wants to interact with the source. They don't want to be spoon fed. They don't want to be told this is the right shoe for you. This is the right shirt for you. This is the right movie for you to watch. They want to make their own definition own sense out of it. This is the right thing for me, right? Based on multiple factors. So they want to interact with the source. They want to innovate via communities. I'll give you an example here, and this is a little Indian context for those of you uh, from around here who perhaps un understand, but would be able to correlate. Um, so uh, my wife, when she has to, she has to buy some girly stuff, um, she would talk to her sister and her friends and they would share pictures. I mean, I'm sure you have witnessed this, right? Or the other example is, look at Facebook. You would find so many pictures of food, people taking pictures of food, right? They, they are promoting the brand of that food for free, for nothing, right? They're not getting paid. They're, these are the people you and I know. These are our friends, right? So things like that. So this is inherent in us as human beings to work in communities. We are not robots. That's how we communicate. We used to, you know, if you, if you think about the other generation, we used to uh, operate in communities by physical closeness. Today, we have other means like social networks and all. 
which bring a much larger set, if you will, for us to build communities around, and we do do that. We might not know that or recognize that. They need regular conversation. They need a dialogue, which is no one-way thing, right? It, it has to be by direction. I tell you that this is what I want. And they want that the feedback that they give, that's actually incorporated in the product. And transparency is, is a part of that. And Gartner Research, which is one of the top analyst firms, it kind of said the same things, but because Gartner said it, not me, it has more value. So Gartner said that customers love their peers more than they, uh, they trust their peers. I'm sorry, my bad. Then they trust you. And uh, the other thing which is important for us uh, in the industry is that across industries, across areas, so in same size in the industry, professional communities, within their region, within, within their cohorts, they rely on their, their communities more than they rely on you. This is the Gartner research, right? And what I'm saying is something that brands, some brands already recognize and they are already kind of coming to terms with this. They're working on this. Um, Procter & Gamble has this initiative which is called Being Girl, amazing initiative, which talks about um, girl things, right? Uh, it's about them. It's not about Procter & Gamble. If you go to the site, you will not see anything Procter & Gamble. It's about the audience, right? So they can collaborate, communicate, give feedback. PlayStation has beautiful communities. You really think about them. And Starbucks, uh, no, my Starbucks uh, idea, um, this is uh, a Starbucks site where you can actually give your feedback, communicate within the community, and they incorporate your feedback. I mean, these are steps where they've actually incorporated your feedback of what you want as, as consumers, as their customers, right? So some brands, some companies are actually really understanding this and really implementing it. Uh, let me pause here for a moment. Uh, I want to talk about switch gears and talk about technology now. So great, we talked about the strategic aspect of this, of uh, you know how open source is becoming a common phenomena. And let's talk about the technology aspect. All right, um, so how many of you know this guy? A anyone? OK, all right. So <laughs> Amit, of course, that. So uh, this is um, a photo of Scott Brinker, one of the leading authorities in marketing technology. Uh, he runs this blog, chiefmarktech.com. If you don't follow him and if you are in this space, you must follow him, OK? Um, so Scott Brinker is known. Um, for the super graphic that he rolls out every year. And I've been following him for some, some time now. So as of 2015, this super graphic, which by the way depicts the, uh, the ensemble of uh, marketing technologies that exist out there. So as of 2015, there were almost 2,000 vendors in 43 categories, 2,000 of them. And let me also tell you that before that, they, the, the year before that, they were like 1,500. And before that, it was like 1,000 of these vendors. So look at the pace these technologies are growing that marketers use. So many of them, right? So what does it mean? It means that heterogeneity is actually a marketing technology reality. And Forrester said it very right. Anjali Yakundi, who is a senior analyst in Forrester, she said, and I'm going to read some excerpts from this, she said that right now no vendor has, a sing has every single component despite of what they claim. So some vendors, which I'm sure you know, do claim that they have this thing figured out. And she also said that many of her clients would not rip and replace the existing investments. Key point. Right? So what firms look for is that they want to have the best of breed vendors and make their own stack. <coughs> this should be telling. Now if that's true, then single suite solutions cannot work. The solutions that sell you those umbrella things and say, oh, you know what, this blanket thing will solve every puzzle in the marketing technology, that does not mean that they do not sell. And as a matter of fact, you know, in some situations, they are actually good fit as well, I, I would argue, right? But by that argument, 
having everything with one vendor is not the solution. And uh, Brian Solis, uh, who is again a major uh, authority, a leading authority in marketing technology, uh, he kind of termed this notion in terms of digital Darwinism. He said, and I'll quote him, that we are living in an era where technology and society are evolving faster than businesses can adapt. That's the problem. That's the problem, right? So but take an example. In, in India, um, we did not have enough penetration in terms of landline phones, the wired phones, right? Many people did not have it. But we skipped that, and the, the penetration that we have in mobile is through the roof. And because we have such penetration in mobile in India, it's important for organizations, brands, product companies to think about mobile. Because we have that penetration. It's the consumers. It's you who adapted. And you force the brands, you force the companies, you force the uh, products uh, or organizations out there to think about you, the platforms that you use. And the, the underpinning of this is that there has to be constant innovation. And what I want to argue is that if you need that, then you need Drupal. So uh, let, let me preface uh, this argument a little bit. So uh, if you have worked with marketing technology solutions enough, I know few of us have. I know Amit has worked on it uh, for a very long time. I myself uh, have had worked on it for about 15 years. Um, so your website is the centerpiece of your marketing technology stack. right? It's a hub and spoke thing. So everything that you do, whether you do you know, search engines or you do PPC campaigns or you do some you know, uh, offline media optimization, you need content and assets. And they somewhere sit on your website. right? So you think about this or you think about uh, the systems that integrate it with, with it. So whether it's your marketing resource management system or some other third party integration systems or um, document management, website is kind of the linchpin, if you will. And don't take my word for it. Uh, this is an example. This is a real example. So Chief Martech uh, organizes these awards. They're called the Stacky's Awards. And the winners uh, of Stacky Awards. And you see here, uh, in, so this is Intelligence Bank, an Australian company. It's not a bank as the uh, name might confuse you. It's a product company. And this is their actual marketing stack, marketing technology stack. These are all the technologies they use within their marketing organization, right? So the heterogeneity that I was talking about, right? <coughs> now look at this picture, uh, and maybe it's difficult to read. There are a lot of elements here, like ad role for retargeting, and um, you know, Salesforce for CRM, Google Analytics, all of that. But the argument I'm making is that look at these connections here. Most number of connections are made to Drupal. Why? Because content is your centerpiece. Right? So that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm stating the obvious. Uh, so let's talk about how Drupal does this, right? So we talked about innovation. So um, I, I was having a discussion with, um, with someone about a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about how fastly are the presentation technologies changing, right? Um, so there are new technologies coming every six months, if not every month. Um, Angular was, was the thing, and then ReactJS is now the thing. So many other things, right, uh, that are coming. You know, <clears throat> so if you, if you really read into what Brian Solis said, that, and I, I kind of like that, is that uh, you know, marketers are always sitting on the fence on whether they want to make investment into the existing set of technologies which are relevant today, or they want to make the futuristic investments, right? Because they have something which is relevant today, and they have to make sure that you know it, it keeps running. The engines keep running, right? And there's something in the future which they don't know, which is an unknown, but which is also a fear, which, is, which could disturb their business. Um, if, if some of you attended Greece Note earlier today, so Greece was was talking about how Philips could become a networking company, how Philips could become um, you know, uh, more than a lighting company, if you will, which it is today, which is so true. So disruption could come from anywhere. And you have to be aware of that. And the answer is that you have to have systems 
technically, which allow you to innovate, which do not stop you in terms of flexibility. And you think about, and I know you, most of you guys are, are really conversant with these technology stacks, but think about them, some of the other stacks that are out there. They would restrict you in one way or another. But with Drupal, you won't be restricted because of the sheer flexibility, right? So there's so many modules, the API is so, so open, and everybody can, can kind of interact with the source, so you can make your own stack, arguably, right? So that's one, that's a big one, in my view. So innovation, that, that's the backdrop for innovation. Okay, um, omni-channel. Uh, so we, we always talk about this you know, in conversations. I've been consulting for a long time, and, and we used to have these discussions back in the day, about a couple of, couple of years ago. Now it's more relevant. People have more interfaces to deal with. But if you really think about how content is created in most systems, you work backwards from the, from the structure. We call it the content model. So, so for those of you who are not aware of this, this idea of the content model, which I'm sure most of you are, uh, the way content model works is that you identify that this is what the content structure would be. These, this is how the relationship would be. So you kind of set it in stone. You start from that, right? And then you know, presentation kind of grows uh, up from that. That's how it works in most systems. In Drupal, it's not like that. So uh, many, many people, and I'll give you a technical example. Those of you who have seen Drupal and who have seen some other CMS interfaces, sometimes people come to us and they ask that, why don't you have a tree-like structure in terms of content management? You don't need that because content doesn't work like that. It does not have a hierarchy. You don't need that, right? But that needs to be explained. So if you, we create content first, you create content first. And if you create content first, not structure first, then it can be ingested in any form whatsoever. It can be ingested on a web interface, it can be ingested on your iWatch or whatever, right? Because you did not create it keeping a certain structure in mind, a content model in mind. So um, that's an argument there. Um, the other one um, is about integration. So we talked about you know, the different systems. So integration um, is a big problem. Um, uh, there is a there is a very renowned uh, marketing uh, consulting firm. It's called eConsultancy. Have you heard of them? Yeah. So they had uh, rolled out a report. I think it was a couple of years ago, and um, and they asked about the key pain points. And uh, of that survey, what came out was that integration was the biggest challenge for most marketers <coughs> because there are so many systems they cannot kill their systems. And if it is true then there is nothing better than Drupal. There are 11,000 third-party modules. I'm not saying all of them are just right, but think about it. You, If you need integration with Aloqua, you have a module. If you need integration with Pardot, you have a module. You need integration with any CRM system, in all probability, you have a module. 11,000 of them. So how much pain it takes away in terms of your implementation, right? Um, they, there are about 1,000 which are already available for uh, Drupal 8, because we are talking Drupal 8. Um, the API, uh, it, it was already already pretty exhaustive. Uh, with Drupal 8, it becomes even more powerful. Um, and you, you can control it, you know, in terms of how it is accessed and uh, permissions and ACL driven aspects of it. Um, Acquia also has uh, one of our offerings, uh, which is called Acquia Content Hub, which kind of standardizes this in terms of, you know, how you can integrate with uh, with other systems. I wouldn't talk about it. If you want to know more about it, by all means come to me and, and we'll chat about Content Hub. But integration is something that is very well catered to, um, you know, uh, from a Drupal perspective. And then customers talk about quicker time to delivery. And I think this is one aspect, and I speak from experience. I speak from experience of implementing different CMS systems. This is one aspect where almost no other system beats Drupal in terms of quicker time to market. And the reason is that it gives you so much out of the box. They, they are so, so powerful um, aspects of Drupal that will make um, you produce something very, very quickly and which will not be you know, you know, a bad job in terms of that quick output. Right? This is where Drupal wins. 
other than that, um, you know, we uh, Ac Acquia internally is working on the Lightning Distro, which is an open source project, uh, which is essentially a compendium of um, the best of breed modules, which will accelerate your development time. So there are distributions like that. Um, I, I cannot resist but talk about uh, another uh, another product that we have, which is again built on the top of Drupal. So it's Drupal um, in terms of its core foundation. Uh, it's called Acquire Cloud Site Factory. And the reason I talk about it is uh, Pfizer uh, is one of our customers. And uh, they actually reduced their time to market by 60%. This is a metric, right? I mean, you would not hear this kind of metric anywhere else, you know, just by standardizing on, on one platform. So it act, Drupal actually allows you with quicker time to delivery. All right, so one of the biggest objections that we hear about um, quite often is that all this is great, but it's not enterprising. Right, we do hear about that. It's not enterprise class. And uh, I wanted to put this graphic out. This is a depiction of um, different platforms uh, and how their implementation on the Fortune 500 companies, the top 500 uh, that Fortune identifies. And if you look at that, the blue one is, by the way, Drupal, and then there's Adobe and Sitecore. But the maximum of them out of this list are on Drupal. So this is as enterprisey as it gets. If someone tells you this is not enterprisey, right? Okay. Uh, so um, I, I'm nearing the closure of this. Um, so I, I, I want to kind of make a make the bigger point for the climax, which is that this is actually an opportunity for you guys, more than anything else. This is actually an opportunity for implementers, for consultants. And why is that? It is because of the flexibility you get, because of the acceleration you get, and because of the, the value you can create for your customers, right? So what I propose is that, and this by no means is, is the holy grail, but this is just you know something that I kind of sketched um, roughly. Um, so I propose this model for you in terms of what you could do, how you could create value on the top of Drupal. So think about it, right? So at the bottom, you have this technology implementation aspect. So you have an amazing extensible development framework called Drupal. You could do anything you want with Drupal, right? You have developer tools, there are developer tools available outside, there are developer tools available from companies like Acquia, um, which we can talk more about, uh, which are amazing, which really allow you to create quick, powerful, secure, reliable sites, right? Amazing developer tools. You leverage the, these tools as, as implementers. And then you implement them on platforms which are scalable and robust. You don't have to worry about any of that. You focus on your strengths. And what is your strength? This thing, and I'm talking technology, this guy right here, right here, the swim lane, is your strength. You understand the customer, your customer, whether it's a CPG company, or a financial services company, or a media company, you know their use cases better than us. Let me say that. I mean, as Acquia, or any product company for that matter. You know it better than the Drupal community. Because you're dealt with them. Right? You know those, uh, the buying journey, if I may call it, and the touch points that need to be created, how they need to be created. You know it very well. So this is an opportunity for you to create those package solutions for your customers. So invest your time here is what I argue. Don't invest your time here. This will accelerate the whole thing for you. So you invest your time here. So this is a technology bit. The other aspect of this argument is that you also have an opportunity to perform consulting for this, what I call the open source consumer or the open consumer, right? So in consulting, and I know most of you are business guys, so you will kind of, this will kind of resonate with you. You have an opportunity of creating personas. So in marketing, there's this notion of personas where you identify uh, attributes and then you define. So, so uh, for the broader audience, I'm sure many of you get it, but uh, the idea is that I know that this guy loves travel. I know that uh, you know this guy has interest in a certain type of product. And based on these data points over time, I define that this is what this guy is. Now, this guy does not mean one person. It could mean a much broader audience. And that has to sync with what I have to offer. 
that's a good, good strategy. So marketing has this notion of personas. You can create a strategy for those open source personas because that does not exist, right? And you can create this from, so, so this is the consulting uh, framework from to measurement, so from definition of the audience to the broader story, uh, to channels they need to tap into based on analytical data that you have, all of that. To measurement, how will you measure it and how will you kind of bring it back in the, in the loop, if you will, right? So uh, you could do all of that here. And you can actually, via this, define roadmaps, which you do, I know, most of you, right? You can define roadmaps of what it looks like and how they can constantly innovate, which is the underlying idea I'm trying to get across. So conclusively, what I'm really saying is that this is your chance, and this is for you to decide whether you want to be a cook or a chef. And no disrespect for cooks. Um, I'm a cook myself, nothing like a chef. But, um, but what I really say that this is your opportunity to create your signature dish. Whether you do run of the mill websites with Drupal or you actually create some value. And think about it, when you talk solutions, you can sell it for much more. I, I'm sure most of you know. If you talk tactics with your customers, they'll pay you for tactics. If you talk solutions, they'll pay you for solutions because they think in terms of their pain points. So you're abstracting this whole conversation to a very different level. So this is your opportunity. I, I think with that, um, um, I think I kind of close my case I'm making here and open it up for any questions. I have about 10 minutes. Any questions on this so far? How does the content hub work? I'm sorry? How does the content hub work? Okay, so the question is how does the content hub work? Um, um, I, I think I can give you more details uh, if you come and meet me in the booth for the interest of the broader audience here. Uh, but the idea behind content hub uh, really is uh, bi-directional orchestration and making sure that you eliminate content silos. Uh, in the long-term roadmap, um, it wouldn't just be content, it would be any type of objects, right? So you have your bigger customers that you have, they, they have different type of you know, functionality sitting and they, they could be used elsewhere, right? So how do you repurpose those investments is the idea at a, at a very high level. Uh, I could uh, have a tactical discussion with you um, later if you want. Yes, sir. Uh, there are so many domains where uh, they have not realized the digital transformation yet, at least in India. Right. So, how do you position this strategy to those people? How do you position this strategy? That, that's a great question. And I, I think that's. Um, <coughs> so, in my view, that's an uh, educational thing, right? It's, it's not just this framework, it's any framework. Uh, so uh, what I would say from my own experience is that um, there could be resistance. When, when you try to influence change in organization which are kind of set in a certain way, there could be resistance for sure, so I hear you. But if uh, at all you can step back and you can assure um, the, your customer that you're their trusted partner, and you can have the conversation around value rather than trying to be a salesy guy who's just trying to you know, sell his product and meet some quota. Uh, that wouldn't cut it, but if you talk about the value, which indeed is there, which we talked about, and if you tell them that if you, if you don't do it, uh, you know, what, what is at risk? What is at stake? I, I think, you know, in, in my experience, I found that helpful. Does it answer your question? Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time then. Appreciate it. So is this off copy of this Yeah, you'll have it. Uh, you, you can get it. Uh, get up to it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. So this will be a project on the site, on the front side.